We're gonna get all those chassis parts installed, all the new front end components. And maybe we'll get this thing rolling by the end of the day. That would be the ultimate goal. Sick as that. Everything's real snug though. Yeah, front suspension's in just like that. And JRI coilovers from Detroit Speed. Episode two, I'm excited to get into it, but let's talk about episode one. Americana episode one, we got into stripping this old girl down. It took engine trans, interior out of it, and kind of introduced the car, what we're gonna do with it. And now diving into episode two, we're gonna get into chassis so i have so many awesome detroit speed parts for this car we're gonna get all those chassis parts installed we're gonna get rear housing up in there we're gonna get the front end taken apart we're gonna put in the new all the new front end components and maybe maybe we'll get this thing rolling by the end of the day that would be the ultimate goal let's get into it So here we have all the front end pieces for it. We have a couple different options. So the Coney option is, this is more affordable. This is for, if you're just looking to get your third gen, upgrade everything and have a nice shock strut, that's what you go with. Then we have the Detroit Speed dual adjustable. And these are set up to be either a coilover or just a strut. But with this car, we're gonna use jack plates. So the way the jack plate works on these is really cool. You actually adjust it right through the center there and that's how you adjust your ride height. And that allows for a larger tire to be able to fit up in the front of this car. And also, that's what they sent me. This is all I got. This housing from GearFX is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look at the TIG welds on this. This is, I mean, in comparison. This is like A quality off-road race truck. And then this is like NASCAR quality freaking race car stuff for a crappy third gen. So now I get into this. This is gonna be all the bracketry that we need to do to utilize the Quadrilink. The reason why we're doing Quadrilink is that this car typically comes with a torque arm. And the torque arm works off the center of the chassis and it goes to the center of the rear end housing. And that's what kept it from rocking as you're hitting a gas and hitting different obstacles in the road, whatever. Quadrilink gives you a four link suspension that keeps your pinion angle a lot better, keeps your traction on the ground, and it's just overall a way better setup. So here it is. This is all the Detroit Speed Quadrilink that we will need with JRI absolutely gorgeous coilers. These right here absolutely blew my mind. Be able to utilize all of the suspension, we are going to have to do some chassis stiffening. So these are the chassis stiffeners. These are gonna go in, cut out the interior in there to be able to slide these in, and then that'll give us a good spot to be able to utilize these four link brackets. These guys right here are gonna go up in those pockets right there. We're gonna have to move the fuel lines. We're gonna have to cut the metals. You're wondering where I'm wearing long sleeves today? It's because we're gonna be welding a lot. It's gonna be 180 degrees today it was 106 in the last episode it's hot so it's just gonna be scorcher once we're done with the rear suspension we'll get into the front suspension and hopefully by the end of the day again i'd love to be able to set this thing on the ground and be able to have it a chassis roller these right here look at that in comparison to that let's go do work around here. Are you fortunate enough to have a desk job? If so, that means that you could spend most of your day shopping for car parts on eBay Motors. I have many project cars and they need a lot of parts. I've just been shopping all day. My boss doesn't know that. I don't think he watches these videos, so. What? We're working on the Free 36 and it needs some door moldings. Luckily, one of our partners, eBay Motors, has everything you need. I jumped on, typed in E36 door molding and was overwhelmed with options for both new and used. But with the eBay Guaranteed Fit Program, I know that whatever I pick is gonna show up, it's gonna be the right thing. And if for some reason it's not, they have hassle-free returns, which makes my life easier. So you need to waste time at work or actually buy parts for your car? Go to eBay Motors, check it out, buy some stuff. Guaranteed fit, it's easy. So we got the passenger side all mocked up in here. There it is, all laid in. Do a little more cleanup on that end of it, but, um, Realistically, it's ready to go for the inside. Just a little more wire wheeling and then underneath, there she is all the way up to the front. 
and there's a piece that caps the end, so it won't be bent out. So got all this all cleaned off in here somewhat, so you get some welds on it. And uh, yeah, gear has been over there working on the other side, and we're ready to cut that side over there. And uh, throwing some welds on it here in just a minute. Going quick. That's it for the underside for now. The sliders are welded underneath. See, they're capped here at the end and run all the way back. And they really do a nice job of tying into this entire area, really strengthening this lower link pocket on both sides. We're gonna go down with it now and dive on the inside. Hopefully get the rest of that cut out, welded up, and then we can move on to the four link brackets. This is just the slider. It's been at for about four hours now, just the sliders. And what's next is these. These are the upper link brackets. And they go up and these pockets right here on either side. So make a progress, but yeah, it's hot. <laughs> hours later, literally 10 hours. So this is the upper four link for the rear housing right here. So we had to obviously weld this to the material and then obviously braces into the tunnel and uh, really does a really nice job. This kit is super nice. And then uh, frame sliders on both sides. So you can see over there, um, not frame sliders, I keep on calling it frame sliders. Close enough. So anyways, chassis supports all the way in. Those go all the way up to the very front underneath. And then also on this side, they go all the way up and they're welded all the way through, all the way up. So that is going to give us a strong chassis to start with. I'll show you guys what it looks like underneath here. On the underside, so this is this is where the upper four link will now slide in. Before the link mounts were right there, there's a torque arm car, so it went up to the center of the chassis. It wasn't really all too great. So now we got these really great upper four link pockets to have for our rear end housing. I also came to the realization that these aren't the rear right rear coilover. So these are beautiful JRI coilovers that are gonna go on the back of the car. And they obviously have a flat type mounting surface which doesn't match the coilover mounts on the rear housing or the pockets up in there. Getting the wrong parts is definitely part of it, so we're gonna move on. So we're gonna dive into the front of it now. I am wondering how we're gonna get more steering angle out of it at this point. So we're gonna play with it. I don't know, I haven't done this before. It's the first time seeking more angle out of a vehicle, so and we're just gonna have to put it up there and we're gonna have to play with it and see what I can do to get more steering angle out of it. Anyways, here we go. All right, so before you get to welding, you wanna make sure you have a clean surface. So Andy, how do we go about cleaning these different kinds of metals? With mild steel, it's simple, right? If it's got rust on it, or even just right out of the box, it's gonna have like that oxide. You wanna remove that rust, or I like to use an angle grinder with either a Scotch-Brite pad or just an aggressive pad, and you'll end up getting it so that it's nice and shiny. And then you can just wipe it off with some acetone to clean the dust residue. Aluminum might look clean right out of the box. I mean, it's nice and shiny, and some aluminum comes with a protective coating on it, but there's an oxide layer. So we need to remove that oxide layer. And it's best to do that with a dedicated stainless steel brush. And you're gonna brush that aluminum until you see the aluminum come become a little bit more dull. And it starts to grab the brush, the resistance adds to the brush. And you can tell that that oxide layer is now gone. Then again, wipe it all down with acetone and you're ready to weld it. All right, so we're learning, but this is uh, this is it. Man, how sick is that? Billet freaking JRIs are so clean up in there. And what we figured out is that these need a little collar on top. This is supposed to be on there before that, and so when we put this one together, <laughs> we didn't do that. And there it is. Need to mess with these guys, get them in there. Everything's real snug though. Yeah, 
suspension's in just like that. Dinner's ready. We'll see you at Sway Bar. All right, we are back. So, waiting on parts, right? That's part of the game. And uh, unfortunately, had to wait on some of the correct parts this time. The parts that I got were amazing, but they just weren't right. So here we are, at it again. And now we have all of the hardware and the correct JRI coilovers from Detroit Speed. And these things are absolutely sick. I had no idea that they even made something this lightweight and gangster. That ain't gangster! For something like a crappy third gen Camaro. So obviously, let's take a look at this thing, right? So, got the bare brake set up on the back of this thing. Six piston for the main and four piston for the handbrake that will go in there. I've been tinkering with the brakes a little bit, trying to make sense of uh, what's next on setting up the brakes in the car. Obviously, you guys seen we put the front end on it, and I did end up putting the rest of the front end together. The Detroit Speed Drag Link, Detroit Speed Steering Box. Why would you stay with the steering box when you could go to Rack and Pinion? Well, this box right here is actually quick to 12.71. So this is as quick as a steering rack would be, but you still have the convenience of being able to mount it in the factory location, be able to use all the factory parts. Obviously went with all Moog on the parts for the steering as well. And then got that nice adjustable sway bar on there as well. From Detroit Speed and all those fronting parts are amazing on this thing. I really think it's gonna make this thing absolutely dialed when it comes time to driving it, which I'm already looking forward to. Obviously, I always get asked all the time, how do you keep up the drive? How are you always wanting to work on stuff and always be busy working in your garage? And it's just because I wanna drive stuff, right? So we're gonna get this rear end housing up under the car. I'm gonna get it bolted in the best I can. I am by myself today, no help. Don't wanna bug my buddies on a Sunday. So we're gonna get this thing up in there with the new four link parts from Detroit Speed. Got the drag length, the lower control Control arms, upper control arms. We have the pockets. I threw a little paint on them so it's all ready to go. And then we're going to slide it up in there, throw some bars on it, pick it up, and then put those coilovers on. This has also been changed. I went ahead and made my own drop track bar mount because I want this thing to sit low, low. So we got that all dialed in too. Goals for today. Get the rear end housing in there, get the car maybe sitting on its own way. And I say maybe because I don't even know if the factory wheels and tires are going to be able to go back on this setup. But uh, that's the audacious goal for the day. Let's get to work. Sick. Can't even get the lift up from under it right now because it's on the ground. <laughs> that looks good. I'm stoked on that. So that's it for this one. Just to address the 50 50 weight bias, that is what I'm comfortable driving. I don't even honestly know if that's something that you are seeking when you're building a car to do track stuff with. It seems like it would in my mind, but I don't build cars for a living, nor do I actually build trucks for a living. But the hobby of building trucks has always been get more weight in the rear and then rock crawling to try and get a 50 50 for one going up stuff. Want to be able to keep that weight in the front um, and then with car i feel like 50 50 is just going to be where i'm most comfortable driving next episode we're going to dive into engine reveal and i got the engine just last week so i am stoked to get the engine in here and plan on having this thing done so that um, we can go take it and go for race one of grid life which hearing might be in december but we don't know for sure yet that's it oh boy i see a v8 i see a transmission i see a darren parsons Yo. say I don't work on, you know what? I never say anything. I'm down for any challenge. 